Hey guys, AJ with Relentless Racing. Welcome back to the channel. Last episode, we measured the cylinder bores of my 1ZZ, and we were hoping to hit 79.5 millimeters, but we were slightly larger. If you want to check out that episode, check out the link in the description. In today's episode, we're going to be unboxing the piston set. We're also going to be verifying the piston ring gaps, and we're going to do an installation of the main bearings and the crankshaft. We've got a lot of work ahead of us, so let's get started. Believe it or not, this piston set was under $100 delivered to my doorstep. Four pistons, four wrist pins, and a full set of rings. This is the name of the company that makes my piston set. They're known as NPR America or Nippon Piston Ring. And what I did was I called them and I said, hey, I wanted to make sure that I get the right piston. So I bored mine out to 79.5. And you can see here, here's the set right here. It's SWT10183-2. And it also comes with the rings, obviously. And I wanted to find out, well, what are the ring sizes or the ring gaps for the top ring, the second ring, the oil ring? So these are the numbers he gave me. 8 to 16 thousandths for the top ring, 12 to 20 thousandths for the second ring. And for the oil ring, it was 8 to 28 thousandths. However, what's really interesting about these pistons is that they claim that if your bore is bored out properly, you shouldn't have to touch these rings. So I'm going to verify these gaps. Okay, so we have the rings right here, one, two, and the oil rings. My feeler gauges, I have a little Sharpie right here, and we have one of my pistons. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these guys and all of the rings have markings on them and if you'll notice on them they'll have some writing on the top and so it reads top 50 and that's number one and let me show you what those things look like here's a close-up of the top rings and you can see where they read top 50 on there you can sign them right right here right there right there right there and that's how you know that this is the top now i'm going to mark these things real quick with some little dots so that way i know which one goes into one two three and four cylinders Let's just take the Sharpie, mark these guys up, and I'm just gonna put a little dot in here on here. So one dot, it's one. Here's number two. Here's number three. And number four. This is one, two, three, four. We're gonna lubricate the bores with this Acrolein Childs just up at the top. It already has some in there, but let's just do it again. Ring one, just put some oil on the outside of this guy. Push it right in, push it around. Now I'm gonna push the rings down approximately about an inch. And so about here is about 0.75. So I'm just gonna push this guy in just like this and just kind of keep it Simple, let's just say that this line right here is one inch. So I'm gonna take my piston, push it in down just a little bit. Okay, do it again for cylinders two, three, and four. Now we're gonna grab these guys. I did clean them already, so let's just see where we're supposed to be. This looks like, let's try 14. 14's tight here. That feels pretty good. That one's a little bit loose. That one might be 15. So when you stick these in here, they should be a little stiff. They should have some stiction. 17 feels pretty tight. So that one's 17. So 14, 17, 17, it's tight without forcing it in. So 14, 17, 17. 14's tight. Okay, so I've got 14, 14, 17, 17, right within the tolerance. So I'm calling that these are good. Pulling these things out, I take the side that doesn't have the gap and I pull that side up and then kind of slide it out. Some people take this side, the gap side out first and give it just a little bit of squeeze to help it come out. That can be trouble sometimes if you squeeze it too much. So I just pull them out that way without the gap. So pull it up this way and then up. It is gonna scratch the block a little bit and my block has some scratches in there in the bores from measuring these guys. 
Now after you finish with the top ring, you have to do the second ring and you have to do the oil control rings. Repeat the exact same process and just make sure that these guys really do fit. These are the second rings. Notice it reads top right there. I put a little mark on it. And this gap is a minimum of 12. It's a little bit wider on the outside, maybe like 13. And then on the inside, it's 12. But look at number two. Number two, you could clearly see that that's not parallel. So it's wider here versus up against the wall. So we're gonna have to fix that one. This one is three. Again, it's number, the second ring. And again, this has the same problem. This one looked pretty good. And my minimum is 12 on these guys. So 12 thousandths to 20 thousandths. So I fixed that one already. Let me show you how I fixed this one. So let's do a quick measurement and see what's up. So this one right here is number two. And I know that this is 12 thousand, and that's our minimum. So it looks like it gets stuck a little bit before it gets to the wall. Let me give you guys a better look at that. So I'm gonna take this 12, that's 12 thousandths, and I'm gonna push it into the gap. And I think what you'll notice is it won't go all the way to the edge. It's getting stuck because the gap looks like that. And so this thing's not going all the way to the edge here, which means that it is not quite 12 up against the wall. So the gap kind of goes like, it's not parallel like this, it kind of goes like that. So right at about, so this section is where it stops. So I need it to be 12 where the ends of my fingers are. So ideally you want it to be parallel. So we're gonna have to open this thing up. So instead of it looking like this, it'll look like that. Second ring, number cylinder two. And this is the top because there are my two markings. So this edge here needs a little bit working and so does this edge too. So I'm just gonna take this little file and you know, there are lots of different ways to file one of these guys down. I'm gonna do this one just by hand and I'm gonna try and only do like half of it. So I don't wanna try and get this side, I just wanna try and get the outside half. A little bit right here. Give it a wipe down. Let's add some more oil to it so that way it doesn't scratch our bores that much. Okay, let's go check it out. Let's see how it works. Remember, our minimum gap is 12. It's bigger on the outside. So now we're gonna stick this thing in. And again, this is 12. Looks like it needs a little bit more to open up to 12. Okay, we just adjusted this one more time. Let's check if the 12 fits through there. And it looks like I can get it all the way to the wall. And it looks like it's a little bit bigger, which is good because 12 is the minimum of our piston ring gap. And that's 12 in there, it's pretty tight. so. Well, it's not super tight, but it should get stuck in there. But I'm happy with that. So let's repeat that process for cylinder three over here, and then the second rings will be all set. So we're at cylinder number three, and again, we're working with 12 thousandths, the feeler gauge, and let's just push that in, in here, and it looks like it goes right in just fine. So now it looks like all four of our second oil ring or sorry second piston ring is all set and we've got minimum values of at least 12 in here they're probably around 13 but they're right where they need to be so let me point out one other thing let me pull this guy out after you start massaging these things or adjusting the gap you want to make sure that the ends don't have any like sharp corners on them and if they do you want to take those sharp corners off because sharp corners are bad so I could feel just a little bit right in here. I'm gonna rub that down just a tiny bit and just make sure everything is copacetic with that, just a little bit. Second rings are finished. I just opened the bag of the oil control rings. So we don't need to really measure these guys. So let's set those guys aside. These do not have a top or a bottom. So you just kinda of stick them in here. And these aren't as important as well, let me rephrase that. They're important, but 
the tolerance on these things is way bigger. So they're eight to 28 thousandths. So if we grab our feeler gauge set and we look for the eight, there's an eight right there. I could tell that, that gap is bigger than eight. Yeah, 18 won't go into it. So it's somewhere below 18. If we really want to know since we're OCD. Yeah, it's like 17. So I'm not gonna measure the rest of these guys because the tolerance is so large on them. And again, the piston ring gap on these guys is eight to 28 thousandths. Now we have the piston gaps dialed in. Let's begin the process of prepping the block for the crankshaft installation. The first step is to remove the bearing cap subassembly. The removal sequence is the opposite of the installation sequence. I've moved the block outside and you can see that I've taken off the girdle. I also added some little tiny pieces of scotch tape on top of these oiling holes for the mains. And the reason why I did that is because I don't want to get any fluid or water or whatever solvent that I'm using to clean this thing up. I'm just going to do a quick cleanup. And the reason why I'm going to do a quick clean as opposed to what I normally do is because the oil galleys have this plug here that I can't get out. I can get it out, but I don't think it's going to be worth it on this thing. If this were a race motor, then I would totally do that. And here's the other oil galley plug right here. So there's a oil galley that goes right along there. That's that round tube right there. And you could see the round tube in here as well. That's what that is. And then on this side, it has a coolant tube. That is a coolant tube. That one goes all the way through and we could clean that. But I'm not worried about the coolant area. I'm worried about where the oil goes. So the oil goes in here, obviously comes through here. And I, what I did was I stuck a zip tie through here and proved to myself that it does go down into there, into that galley. So I'm just gonna clean this area up as much as I can. And I'm just gonna use some brake cleaner to clean that up. And again, trying not to get any fluid into this guy so that way it doesn't go into this tube because I can't clean that. There's gonna be a lot of cleaning in this video but when I build a motor, I spend the most time cleaning. Lubricate the cylinder bores to prevent corrosion. Follow the same cleaning process for the bearing cap subassembly. I knew I wouldn't get back to this right away, so I decided to lubricate the ferrous areas. The crankshaft has been cleaned before, but before final installation, I want to make sure she's absolutely clean. My engine professor taught me that Dawn is the number one choice for cleaning engine parts. I really like this crankshaft design because you can clean the oil galleys without having to remove pressed in spherical balls like the Honda crankshafts. Don't forget to blow out the oil galleys in the crankshaft. Don't forget to lubricate the oil galleys in the crankshaft. Any debris or oil on the interface between the block and the bearing cap assembly can cause issues with the main bearing clearances.
Recall when I opened up this 1ZZ, the main bearings looked pretty good. So I opted to replace the bearings with OEM factory bearings in the exact same sizes. Be careful not to wipe off the bearing markings. If this was a race motor, then of course I would measure the main bearing clearances to optimize the oil clearances. Check out my IGTV for videos on how to measure bearing clearances. Make sure you have the correct size and side of the main bearing set. The main bearings which go into the block have a mini oil galley groove in them. Clean the journals where each main bearing sits in the bearing cap assembly. Recall we added oil to these areas to prevent corrosion. Note this side of the main bearing set doesn't have a hole or oil galley within them. Since oil is an incompressible, we want to make sure that we don't get any oil on the block bottom. The thrust bearings minimize how much the crankshaft moves axially or front to rear. The thrust washers have reliefs in them to indicate their orientation. The reliefs face outwards. Adjust the crankshaft to make room for the other thrust bearing. Again, we're trying to keep debris and oil off of the block bottom. Let's prep the bearing cap subassembly for installation. Applying Permatex Ultra Gray to the bearing cap subassembly can be challenging. Take your time, but don't waste time because you don't want the bond to cure. I find it better to apply bond when it is colder and then it doesn't cure nearly as fast. Having the right tool makes all the difference. Here I'm cleaning up mistakes because I didn't pay attention to the Toyota repair manual very closely. Avoid getting lubricant on the interface to the block. Use a rubber mallet to ensure proper seating. Lubricate the bearing cap subassembly bolts with motor oil on the threads and underneath the head. I thread the bolts by hand to ensure there is no cross threading and I want to feel if there is any thread damage. Follow the sequence per the Toyota Repair Manual. Unlike other manufacturers, Toyota torques these bolts and then torques them an additional 90 degrees in two steps, 45 degrees at a time. Notice after step 5, all the markings are now 90 degrees of where they started. Install the remaining bearing cap assembly bolts per the sequence found in the Toyota Repair Manual. Install the remaining bearing cap subassembly bolts in several passes. I opted to make passes at 7 foot pounds, 10 foot pounds, and finally 14 foot pounds.
Bond cleanup is always much easier when it hasn't cured. Definitely clean up the rear main seal interface before the bond cures. There's nothing like good bond squeeze out. Lastly, don't forget to admire your work. And just like that, the bottom end is complete. Let me know what you guys think of this video in the comments. This is AJ with Relentless Racing. Stay relentless, and I'll see you on the track.